we want to determine the limit if it exists. Notice how here we're determining a limit of a function of two variables. So for review, as x comma y approaches the point a comma b, the limit of f of x comma y is the value L if the limit from all paths approaching the point a comma b exist and are equal to L. So if this surface is a graph of f of x comma y, and we're trying to determine this limit and it's equal to L, that would only be true if the limit from all the paths shown here or any potential paths would also give us a limit of L. So notice how potentially there's an infinite number of paths to consider. However, if the surface is smooth and continuous over a region containing the point A comma B, we can find some of these limits by performing direct substitution. So going back to our example, notice how if we tried to perform direct substitution, we'd have the indeterminate form of zero divided by zero, which means to determine this limit or determine if it exists, we'll have to determine the limit from several paths and see if all of those paths give us the same limit. Now I should mention it is often helpful to have three-dimensional graphing software to analyze the graph of our functions. I provided the graph here below. By analyzing the graph, notice how it does appear that as we approach the origin, let's say along this path and this path, the limits may be different, which indicates this limit probably is not going to exist but we'll have to show this by determining the limit would be different along different paths. If we don't have graphing software to analyze the surface, then we would just select paths approaching the origin, and several of the more common paths are shown here on the x-y coordinate plane. We can approach the origin along the x-axis or y equals zero, along the y-axis or x equals zero, as well as the lines y equals x or y equals negative x, or even y equals x squared or y equals negative x squared. But probably the most two obvious paths approaching the origin would be along the x and y axes, or y equals zero and x equals zero. Let's begin by considering those two paths. So for the path along the x axis, or y equals zero, we'll substitute zero for y in our limit. So we'd have the limit of x comma zero approaches zero comma zero of, again we're substituting zero for y, so we'd have five x times zero divided by x squared plus zero squared. So simplifying, we have the limit of x comma zero approaches zero comma zero of, we'd have zero divided by x squared. Notice how when x equals zero, we'd have the indeterminate form of zero divided by zero, but for all their non-zero values of x, this would be equal to zero, which means our limit is zero. Now be careful here, this does not mean our original limit is equal to zero. This only indicates that along this path or along the x-axis, as we approach the origin, the limit equals zero. For this limit to exist, all the paths approaching the origin have to result in the same value of zero. So now let's go ahead and consider the path along the y-axis where x equals zero. So if we consider the path x equals zero, we'll now substitute zero for x. So we'd have the limit of zero comma y approaching zero comma zero. Now if we substitute zero for x, notice how the numerator is going to be zero. The denominator would be zero squared plus y squared, or just y squared. And once again, notice how as y approaches zero, this quotient would always be zero for all non-zero values of y, and therefore as y approaches zero, this limit equals zero. So now we've shown that along these two paths, the limits are zero, but once again, that doesn't mean this limit equals zero. And because of the graph of the surface, Let's go ahead and consider one of these two paths. These two paths are y equals x and y equals negative x. So let's consider the path y equals x. If this limit is not equal to zero, then we know the original limit does not exist. So here we'll substitute x for y, which would give us the limit of x comma x 
approaches zero comma zero of, again we're substituting x for y, so we'd have five x times x divided by x squared plus x squared. So simplifying, we'd have five x squared divided by two x squared, but this does simplify to the limit of x comma x approaches zero comma zero of, this simplifies to the constant five halves, giving us a limit of five halves. Notice how, notice how this value is not affected by x. So now we've shown along the path y equals x, the limit is not zero, the limit is five halves. So as soon as we find one limit that's different, this indicates a limit does not exist. Now you may also want to consider the path y equals negative x. Along this path, we can determine the limit would be negative five halves. But again, we have enough information now to determine the original limit does not exist. I hope you found this helpful.